this is made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm really happy to be back on here after a couple of weeks break. As you might know, I have been off YouTube just for the last couple of weeks because my children were off school for the Easter holidays. And I just found it really tricky this holidays trying to squeeze in filming a video, um, which is a shame because I have missed being on here. So yes, it's lovely to be back on today. I didn't even get the chance to sew actually this holidays. It was really busy with one thing and another. Um, but um, I did do a bit of sewing just before the holidays and I have done a bit of sewing this week too. So I've got a few things to share. Um, I started to make before the holidays, which I finished this week. And I've also made something else as well. So I've got a couple of new makes to share in this video and a few other things too. And yeah, it's just really nice to be back on. So thank you very much for having me. So I'll get started on the video. I'll kick off as usual with what I'm wearing today. And recently I've really been trying to reach for things in my wardrobe that I don't often reach for. Um, I've been, I'm conscious, having made quite a lot of handmade clothes over the last few years, as you can imagine, my wardrobe is quite full. And I've been trying to sort of look through it and think about, is there anything in there that I'm just not reaching for and that probably is, shouldn't be in there anymore that I could hand on? So I've been trying different things out and trying to figure if they're things I do want to keep and that I am going to wear, or if they're things that are just filling up my wardrobe that could be better used by somebody else. So when I've been looking through in the mornings, I've been trying to pick out things yeah, that I don't often go for. And this dress is one of those things. This is the Wilder Gown Pattern by Friday Pattern Co. Um, you probably know the pattern. It was really, really popular a couple of years ago and there were so many versions popping up all over Instagram. And then recently I haven't seen quite as many versions, although maybe when it gets towards the summer, people might, you know, start making sort of floaty summery versions. I don't know. Um, mine is more of a wintry version, as you can probably see, but it's a really interesting pattern. So it's a woven, a pattern for woven fabrics. And the interesting detail on it, which I think sets it apart from other patterns, is the neckline. Um, when you cut the pattern piece, it's the bodice and the sleeve. It's like a raglan sleeve, as you can see, there's a seam line there. Um, they look really weird because instead of sort of tapering in, in at the top towards your neck, like pattern pieces normally would, they sort of stay wide and then you make a channel out of all of them once you sew them together and then gather it in around the neckline. So you can see here, um, it's got this little channel at the top. Um, it's a bit hard to see really in this fabric because I made my version in quite a busy fabric, um, which is why I went for this black um, feature necktie to kind of show off that little detail still so it isn't totally lost in the fabric. Um, and then you can make it as a dress or a shirt. You can make it as a full length uh, maxi dress or a shorter dress. The maxi dress has two tiers. The short dress has one tier or yeah, the blouse version. And you can make it with a, a sort of shorter sleeve or a slightly longer sort of three quarter sleeve. And it sews up really nicely. And it took me a while to get around to making this dress. And I've only made one version, the version I'm wearing today, because I wasn't sure if it was for me. It is quite oversized. Um, as you can see, it's not designed to be fitted at any point. It's a very loose sort of um, smock style dress. And I wasn't sure how the, I'd feel wearing the neckline, um, whether it would bother me a bit having the fa fabric gathering around my neck. But I thought um, a, a while ago, I'll just give it a try because there's other patterns that I've tried and been surprised how much I like them. And this is quite an iconic indie pattern, so I thought it'd be fun to give it a go. Um, so I made my version in this fabric. I wanted to go for quite a lightweight drapey fabric because I thought anything thicker might feel too bulky around the neck. And this is a viscose fabric that I got quite a while ago from Rainbow Fabrics. I think it was quite a good price. So... Um, I bought a decent amount of it and I hadn't got any particular set plans for it, but I quite liked it. I quite like the black base with the different pops of colour with the flowers on it. But I, did, I liked it, but I didn't love the fabric and I thought it might be a fabric I could maybe use for wearable twirls. So I thought I'd say my wild are going up in it. I thought it would go quite well with the pattern. Um, and actually, I do like it. Um, I, made the, I made the version with long sleeve, I actually lengthened the sleeve to make it a full length because I wanted to make a kind of wintry version I could wear with black tights like I've got on today. And I made this version here with a one tier. Although I do remember that I lengthened the skirt pattern piece quite a bit because when I trace the pattern piece out and I usually sort of hold them up against myself in the mirror to see approximately where, where they might come down to in case I need to adjust them. And um, I remember thinking, gosh, that is going to be really short. So I did lengthen it a little bit. It looks longer, I think, on this drawing on the back 
than I thought it actually came up as. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, my version is that. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I'm just wearing it with, yeah, I wore it earlier on the school one with some black tights and some black boots. Um, and actually, when I put it on this morning, the neckline was bothering me a little bit. I did feel conscious of the gathering around my neck, but now I've been wearing it for a couple of hours. It feels quite comfortable. I feel like I've eased into it. And actually, it's a really nice, comfy one to wear. It is really loose fitting, but I think it feels quite cute too. Um, a sort of baby doll style dress. And I think I'm going to keep it because it is one of those things that when I do reach for it, I do enjoy wearing it more than I think. Um, I made the smallest size based on my bust measurement um, and my hips and waist would be a size up, but there's so much ease in this dress um, that I've still got loads of room in it, even though I did size down on the waist and hips. And I, I think even at the bust, I've got quite a lot of room. Um, so it's definitely a roomy, a roomy dress. And I, Wearing it, I do think maybe I should revisit it at some point. I do quite like the idea of making this short, sorry, this one here, the short sleeve version in a full length, kind of like a floaty dress for summer. Um, again, maybe it would be too much around the neck in the hot weather. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I definitely think I'm glad I got it on today and I'm, I'm really enjoying wearing it. One thing I was going to mention actually about it is I made this tie um, in like a cotton lawn fabric I had left over from another make I just wanted something to make it stand out a little bit like I said just to sort of show that feature off and last time I wore this dress um and was filming a video a couple of people recommended that I switch out this um cotton lawn tie which can get a bit sort of scrunched um so it's not very sort of full I guess um yeah a couple of people recommended I said switch it out and then replace it with like a velvet black ribbon and I thought that was a really really great idea and had a little look at the time for black velvet ribbons online, but I didn't end up getting one. But putting this dress on again today makes me think I'm definitely going to buy um, a velvet black velvet ribbon because I think it would work a lot better and elevate the dress a little bit. Because I feel like when I wear it, this cotton lawn tie does sort of let it down a little bit. <laughs> and yeah, I just think it would look lovely with a black velvet tie, um, black velvet ribbon. So thank you um, if you're watching this video and you, you um, commented on my video last when I wore this. Um, I do think that's a great idea. I'm wearing this again today, it makes me think I'm definitely going to do that, but yes. That is what I'm wearing today, but I'll move on to now a couple of things that I've been making um, over the last week or so, or that I've finished off this week actually. So I think I'll start off with the make that I started before the Easter holidays and then finished off this week. And actually I'd completed most of this make before Easter and I was sort of hoping to have a moment just to finish it off during Easter, but I didn't get the chance. So this Monday, the first day my children went back, I quite look forward to coming home and I got my sewing machine out and just finished this one quickly off. So that was quite nice and satisfying to have it all done and dusted. But this make um, is one um, where I used fabric that I had left over from quite a recent project. So you may well recognise this fabric. This is the fabric here. It is a lightweight linen fabric with this blue and white stripe on it. And I originally got this fabric, I think a couple of summers ago. Um, it came from Ditto Fabrics. And I was quite interested to buy and try sewing with a lightweight linen. It wasn't something I'd sewn with before. I've sewn with more of a classic linen and a viscose linen, but not a lightweight linen. But it is a lovely fabric, actually. Really, really soft. A bit more, it feels a bit more soft than a sort of classic standard linen, I think. Um, and it's lovely and airy too. Um, so it's a really nice fabric, but it had been sitting in my stash for, I think, a couple of years. Um, and I really wanted to actually sew it up. Um, I don't really like having fabrics hanging around in my stash for too long. I find the longer I have them, the more I sort of um and ah and agonise over what to make. And sometimes I can lose a bit of inspiration to sew them too. So yes, this year I got this fabric back out and thought I need to get my thinking cap on and decide what I'm going to make with it because I do really like it. Um, and I think having had a bit of time to think about it, having not seen it for a while, I decided to come at it from a different perspective. I'd originally bought it thinking... Maybe I'd make a dress or maybe like a summery two-piece set of some sort, like a little top and shorts or skirt. Um, but actually, um, this year I decided what would be really cool is to make a lightweight linen shirt. I thought that'd be really useful for the summer for kind of covering me up on a holiday and that sort of thing. So yes, if you've seen a couple of my recent videos, you'll know I made the Olia shirt by Paper Theory in this fabric, which was a really fun make. It was definitely a bit of a challenge. Um, I took my time over it to make sure that I got the different construction details all accurate. So it's definitely a challenging one, but very enjoyable and satisfying too. 
and I'll put a picture of my earlier shirt so you can see how it turned out. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I'll get a lot of wear out of that this summer. But because I'd originally bought enough fabric to be able to make a dress or a two-piece set, then after I cut out my earlier shirt, I found out I found I had a decent amount of fabric still left over, which I wanted to use. Um, and I thought it'd be nice again to sew up the rest of the fabric before the summer so I could wear a couple of different summery pieces. Using this fabric it is very summery and lightweight. So what I decided to make is a little pair of shorts. And here are my shorts I made out of the lightweight linen, uh, which I think are really cute. Um, so I made them using a pattern I've sewn before, but as trousers. And it's this pattern here. It's another Friday Pattern Co pattern. It is the Saguaro set. I think I'm saying that right. I always doubt myself when I say it out loud. I think you're not supposed to pronounce the G. So yeah, Saguaro set. Um, so I've made both the top and the trousers from this set. And I thought they'd make a really nice pair of shorts too. Um, and I liked about the shorts, they've got pockets. They're quite a nice little sort of slash pocket feature. I have used another pattern, like a free pattern to make summery shorts before which is the Patterns for Pirates Walk the Plank Pajama Shorts pattern. It's another pattern for woven fabrics. And although it's a pajama shorts pattern, I think it works well for like a summery elasticated short too. I've kind of added like a paper bag bit at the top and yeah, I've enjoyed making that, but I thought I'd give a different pattern a go. And it was quite straightforward to make these. I already had my size traced out and I knew that fit nicely. I think I made the size medium um, based on my hips maybe, or is that right? I think I made the size medium. Um, oh, that's the finished garment measurement, so that's not helpful. I'm have a quick look. So yeah, oh yeah, so my hips have put me as a size small, actually. I decided to size up a bit, having had a little look online. I thought I'd rather a bit more room there and a bit more gathering around the waist, so I went for a medium. I think I went for a medium waistband, too, on the basis I just make it a bit more gathered, because um, you can just bring it in with the elastic then. Um, so yeah, all I needed to do, really, was sort of to basically fold up the pattern pieces to turn them into shorts rather than the sort of full length pants. Um, and it was quite a nice sew. I like the little waist tie detail and how it kind of the stripes really show and you sort of go in different directions a little bit there as the waist ties hang down. It's got the pockets, which will be quite handy, I think, for summer. Um, and I quite like how the stripes around the waistband, just they're more gathered, so they have a different sort of, they look a bit different to the, um, the shorts that so kind of has a bit of a contrast there and the different how wide the stripes are, which I quite like. I um, mean, it's quite a nice speedy sew. The only thing is, although I think they're quite cute, I'm not sure if they look a bit too pyjama-y. Um, so I may end up using them as pyjama bottoms rather than shorts that I'd wear out and about. I think I could wear them out and about, maybe if I was on holiday somewhere by a beach rather than sort of wandering around here. Um, but I think what I need to do really is, I need to have a go of trying them on with a few different things. Um, I quite like to try them with my Olia shirt to see how it looked with like a full stripey outfit, so whether that be overkill or whether it might work as kind of like a summer set. Um, and maybe try it with a couple of different tops and yeah, figure out whether I'd be able to wear them out as kind of nice lightweight summery shorts or whether they're really better as pyjama shorts. Um, let me know what you think. They are a bit pyjama-y, aren't they? <laughs> um, but I think they'd be lovely as pyjamas though, particularly for hot weather because it is such lightweight. Obviously, linen's lovely and breathable too. So I think they would make a great pair of pyjama bottoms um, if I do decide that is the best thing for them. But I think what I might do is try them on with a few different things. I might take some photographs and share them with you in a future video so you can see how they looked styled in different ways. That might be quite fun. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to have used up that fabric. That pretty much used up um, every last scrap of the fabric. So yeah, I'm really glad to have used it up. It's a really nice fabric and I'm glad it's not sitting in my stash anymore. So yes, those are my Soado shorts. I definitely would use this pattern again to make another pair of shorts. Um, but yeah, maybe if I wanted to wear them out in the day, maybe in less pyjama-y fabric <laughs> but yes there they are they're, they're a fun make and I do really like the stripes and I'm sure they'll get lots of wear and um, whether it be out and about or a bedtime so yeah that is my first make I wanted to share and then the next make I've got to share is the one that I've been working on this week and I've really enjoyed sewing this one it's been really nice actually to do some sewing this week having had a couple of weeks break I think I've come back feeling extra energized to sew and I haven't been on my sewing machine sort of every hour since the children have come back to school by any means. Um, but this is quite a speedy make. And then the shorts, I only really had the hem to do. So again, it was fairly quick. Um, but it has been nice to do a bit of sewing this week. And this make is one, again, using a fabric that's been in my stash for a while. I think it's been in my stash. I think I might have got it, not this Christmas just gone, but the Christmas gone the year before. Um, so I remember getting it in the Fabric Godmother sale in their sort of Boxing Day or New Year's sale. 
um, and then it's a swim fabric and I've sort of been putting off sewing with it. I'd kind of wanted to sew it up for last year's holiday and then I hadn't got round to it. And so I thought, I think having had Easter, coming back into the summer term and feeling quite excited about getting back into sewing, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna sew this swim fabric up, make sure I can use it and enjoy it when we go on holiday this summer. So that's what I've been doing this week. Um, so this is the fabric here. It's a really lovely um, Liberty swim fabric. Like I mentioned, it came from Fabric Godmother. It's got this lovely ditzy floral print on with this very pretty, quite bright blue background and then lots of flowers in reds and um, oranges and yellows and whites. I love a ditzy floral and um, I think one of the reasons I hadn't, um, well, there's main, two main reasons why I've been putting off sewing this fabric. The first one is because it's so pretty. I couldn't really decide what to do. I was sort of swimming, swinging between one pattern and another and couldn't make up my mind. And the other reason is I do often put off sewing swimwear because it isn't my favourite thing to sew. Um, so yeah, I have to be in the right mood to decide to tackle it. But actually, I did really enjoy sewing it this week. I think, especially having not sewn for a couple of weeks, I was quite excited and it was a good time to tackle it. Um, and actually, I had a look on the Fabric Godmother website yesterday and they haven't got this particular fabric in stock anymore. But I think there's another Liberty swim fabric that is very similar to this. I'm not sure if it's exactly the exact same print um, with different colours or that's very similar print. But I'll, I'll link it down below. It's very lovely too. And there's some other lovely Liberty swim fabrics. And I have made one other swim set using a Liberty swim fabric. And I, I really like it. And what I particularly like about it is I know sometimes you can get sort of swim slash sports fabrics, but they're not always like chlorine test, sort of chlorine fast. Um, I think with the Liberty fabrics, I think they're treated somehow to make them more resistant to chlorine so they last better. And I have found that is the case that my, I can tell the difference between my Liberty swim fabric, having worn it in sort of chlorinated pools and washed it. It stood up better over the test of time than some of the other swimming costumes I've made using fabrics that I don't think had that extra sort of chlorine fastness so or more sort of sports and activewear fabrics, I think. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I knew I was going to be hopefully wearing this one for a while, hopefully it'll wash again well like my other Liberty one. I really wanted to make something that I knew I'd love and yeah, I really enjoy wearing. So what I decided to make was a bikini set because um, I do prefer a bikini set often to a one piece. Um, and I thought I'd try a new pattern, a new pattern company to me. And it's a pattern company that I've been eyeing up for quite a while. It's, the pattern company is called Edgewater Avenue. And they sell only swimwear patterns. That's their sort of area. So I thought it'd be quite fun to give one a try. They've, they've got a whole range of different patterns. Some are quite out there and some are more classic. Um, and the one I decided to give a go was a bikini top. And it's this one here, which is the Natalie bikini top, it's called. So it looks like quite a simple bikini top with this, this sort of um, two front piece and a little string around the middle and tie at the top. But what's really cool about the Natalie top is actually you can style it in 10 different ways. Um, depending on different ways you tie it. Um, if you, I'll link the bikini top um, down below and you can go and have a look. They've got pictures showing all the different ways you can um, to wear it, which is really cool. And I've had a go of a couple of different ways. Um, it does take a bit of time to figure out where you're putting which bits, but it's a lot of fun actually. So I thought it would be one I'd have a lot of fun with really. And I thought it'd be really nice to try a, a, swim, a swimming costume pattern actually by a company that specializes in swimwear and see how it differs from a swimming costume pattern by a pattern company that doesn't specialise in swimwear, I guess. And one thing I really like about Edgewater Avenue actually is they have a YouTube channel with so many really great tutorials on it. Um, the lady that runs the company, Katie, her tutorials and advice on sewing swimmer is really comprehensive, clear, informative. I definitely recommend if you're looking to sew swimmer to have a look at her channel. Even if you're not sewing an Edgewater Avenue pattern, there are loads of great sort of advice on generally sewing swimwear. In particular, I really enjoyed, I watched three videos by her, which is um, about how to sew with swimming elastic. There's like part one, two, and three. And I found it really interesting because it is an area I am a bit nervous of or not super confident with, even though I have sewn a few different pieces of swimmer before. And hearing her take on sewing swimmer was really interesting. One thing in particular that I thought was really interesting was, I've always thought with when adding in swimmer elastic, you need to kind of make the elastic a bit shorter than the actual swim fabric to kind of gather it in a little bit and add a little bit extra tautness. But she was saying she prefers actually just to put the elastic on flat without actually adding extra tautness. She doesn't like it when swimming costumes sort of wrinkle up a little bit and she finds it still adds the support you need, even if you sew it on flat, which I thought was really interesting. And I did that, I followed her instructions and did that on this Natalie bikini and actually it's come out really nicely. So that was really interesting to know. So 
The bikini top here has elastic down the sides here. Um, you don't sew it all the way up the sort of tie, but you sort of stop it part of the tie, but it has a support down the sides of the sort of bikini triangle. But it is just sewn on flat, so you don't have to worry about getting the right tension of the elastic to the fabric or anything like that. And it, and it went in really nicely. Um, and again, this little strap here, it's quite clever. This, this strap here's got elastic inside it. So it has a really lovely stretch to it and it should give a really nice amount of sort of pull and hold in place when it's on. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, I'll link the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel down below. I'd really recommend it. I also, when I was sewing this Natalie bikini, um, I used the YouTube sew along to sew it and I actually found it better than the instructions. Um, the instructions were good, but there were a couple of points where I wasn't 100% clear, um, but the YouTube video showed it all really nicely and I used a bit of a combination in the end of the paper pattern and the YouTube instructions. So yeah, I really enjoyed sewing it actually. Um, and here is my Natalie bikini. Um, so yeah, this is with the classic way of styling it. I need to get a couple of pictures of this actually. If I can get a picture or two, I'll pop them in um, for me wearing this one with the bikini bottoms. I'll talk about those in a moment. One thing I did have a bit of battle with before I started sewing um, was trying to get my overlocker to sew the swimwear fabric. Um, because Katie does recommend um, that you sew with the overlocker, she said it gives a better finish. I've always sewn with my sewing machine before, but I thought I'd like to give it a try, but I just could not get my overlocker to work with the swim fabric. Um, it just kept st skipping stitches. I did change the overlocker needles. I just been using my standard overlocker needles, which I use on everything um, woven and stretch fabrics. I don't generally change the overlocker needles. Um, but I did change them and actually, when I did change them, I thought this is really easy. I could easily change them more often. It wasn't any harder than changing a sewing machine needle. Um, I don't know why I'm always put off doing it, but I bought some special needles that I found recommended online that would be good for sewing stretch fabrics and swimwear. I think there were some Schmetz needles. Um, but even when I put those needles in, my overlocker still skipped stitches on the swimwear fabric. So in the end, I gave up and I went back to my sewing machine um, and used a zigzag stitch. And actually it it's turned out fine. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to carry on doing that in the future because I just couldn't get it to work and I didn't know what else to try. If you have any ideas of what else it could be, um, it would just work for a little bit and then it would just, just not drop a few stitches. A bit like, you know, when you have a sewing machine and it does a zigzag and then every now and then it just misses a zigzag and you end up with like a, that sort of, rather than zigzag, zigzag, it'll be like a skipped point. Um, it was a bit like that on the overlocker and a bit, yeah, I couldn't really figure out what else I could do. Um, but yeah, sewing on the sewing machine was fine. Um, so that's what I did in the end. And I used to use normal standard thread. Um, I did try a while ago when I was sewing my last piece of swimwear to use Maraflex thread. So I thought that'd be really nice. I wouldn't have to do zigzags. I just, um, so using a straight stitch, but that skips stitches on my sewing machine too. So there's obviously something about swim fabric, I guess that makes it hard to catch or I don't even know, but it worked out okay using my sewing machine. So I was glad that I didn't have to sort of give up altogether. So yes, that is my Natalie bikini top. And then for the bottoms, I made them using a pattern I've used before. These are my bikini bottoms. So I went for quite a high waisted bottom. I quite like when it pulls in around my waist. Um, I thought particularly if I've got a fairly string bikini type top, it'll be nice to have more coverage. Um, so I don't feel like I'm totally um, exposed as it were. Um, so yeah, these are my bikini bottoms. I lined them with, I didn't have quite enough of this fabric to, to use for lining, but I didn't really need to. I just lined them with, um, this navy blue fabric. This is another Liberty fabric. And I think I bought it at the same time as this Dixie floral fabric, thinking it would make a great lining. And actually with the Natalie top, um, you can make that like um, one color on each side. So you can have even more ways of wearing it if you can sort of make it reversible bikini. Um, but I thought I quite like it one, 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 all one color. So I thought when you tie the ties, you might get a flash of the other side. And I quite wanted it all to be the Dixie floral, but anyway, it works quite well having this navy to line the bikini bottoms because you don't see it because all the sort of edges are turned in any way. So it's all quite nice and covered by the ditzy floral. But this is, this pad, this, these bikini bottoms I made using the bottom half of a swimsuit pattern I've made, which is this swimsuit pattern here. Let's get it out. Have I got it? Yes. It is the um, opi um, Opian Pilatus swimsuit which is this quite cool swimsuit with a cutout detail at the back and this tie at the front. And I just quite like the shape of the bottoms and you kind of make the bottoms and tops separate and then attach them around the middle. So it's quite easy just to borrow the bottoms and then I just add a little waistband um, onto them. The waistband that you can see, um, just to turn them into bikini bottoms. And I've just adjusted them slightly. I think I've just maybe brought them slightly higher and just tweaked them slightly to make them fit me nicely. But 
Um, that is the pattern I quite like to use. I just quite like the, how the leg openings um, work. I did think actually when I made this version, next time I might make it for a little bit more coverage. On the bottom, I might make a little bit, add a little bit extra here. Um, but, um, but other than that, yeah, I, I really like them and I thought they'd go well with a bikini top. Um, Edgewater Avenue do have bikini bottom patterns too, but there wasn't anything I like better than these really. Um, some are a bit more low cut or a bit more high leg and um, but I thought I'd just stick with these because I like them. So, But yeah, I definitely would try another Edgewater Avenue pattern. I'd definitely like to try another one in the future. I have to have a little look and see yeah, what else I might like to try. But yes, this is my um, bikini um, and I'm really pleased to finally use this fabric. It is lovely fabric. So that's ready to be popped away now and got out and we go on holiday this summer. Um, and yeah, I'm going to enjoy trying out different ways, trying to figure out the different ways of how you can tie it to make it into different looks. And um, that'd be quite a lot of fun too. 10 is quite an impressive amount of ways to be able to style one bikini, I think. So yes, I'll, um, I'll link the patterns I mentioned down below. I'll link everything as usual that I've been talking about. Um, but yeah, that is my quite speedy make this um, week. And I really enjoyed, um, how it came together. I actually, yeah, I, I, I sometimes think with swimwear, once I get stuck into it, it's not half as bad as I think it's going to be. So I don't know why, that, why I put it off every time, really. But yeah, that is my Natalie bikini top and Opium Pilatus bikini bottoms. So those are my two new makes. Or I guess you could call them three makes if you consider the bikini top and the bikini bottom to be two separate items. But either way, I'm, I'm really glad to have sewed those fabrics up. Um, I've used up pretty much all the Ditsy Floral fabric and the lightweight linen now. And um, yeah, it's just really nice to have used them because I have been sitting in my stash for quite a while and I had been feeling quite indecisive about what to make. But I'm glad I made the decision and um, I'm really happy with what I've made. So yes, that is very good. Um, so that's those. And then the next thing that I wanted to share was a little alteration that I did just before the Easter holidays. And I thought I'd share it because I always find it really interesting when other people are sort of making little alterations and adjustments to handmade clothing to make them work better for themselves, which is what I'm hoping this alteration will do with this garment. And I think it's part of, I decided to alter this as part of my ongoing sort of editing of my handmade wardrobe. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I've really been trying to look at my handmade garments because I have got a lot of them now and figure out which ones I'm actually reaching for. And with the ones I'm not reaching for, if actually I should hand them on to someone else because they're never going to be something I'm going to wear a lot or whether there's something I can do to them to make them more wearable and give them a little bit more life in for me. And this top um, that I made an alteration to, was one that I had sitting in a little box of items. I'd sort of taken out of my wardrobe thinking, yeah, I'm not really wearing it. Um, but I was kind of, I'd been kind of reluctant to let go of in a way. And I thought before Easter, I had a sort of an hour of time to kill. And I thought I'd have a little look through that box and um, see if there was like a quick win in there. Either something that I was like, yes, I definitely should hand it on. Or something I thought maybe I could just do a quick adjustment to, to make it more wearable. So I can pop it back in my drawer and actually wear it. Um, and yes, yeah, so I found this top here. So this is a top, it's a jersey top, and I made it quite early in my sewing journey. I remember buying this fabric, this lovely cotton jersey fabric, and this rainbow colours. And I remember at the time being so excited when I started sewing about how you could find such fun fabrics and turn them into garments. Um, yeah, I just remember being, yeah, filled, full with the joy of sewing at that point, and I really enjoyed sewing this up. And I use this fabric to make this pattern here, which is the Agnes top pattern by Teal in the Buttons, which is a pattern I still really enjoy sewing and wearing. They're quite a simple fitted jersey top pattern. And more recently, it's an extended size range. So it goes from a UK 6 to 34 now. So it's got a really good size range. Um, so you can make quite a simple basic top with a scoop neck, quite figure hugging with different length sleeves. Or you can make a couple of extra embellishments to the top, either this sort of puff shoulder detail on the sleeve or this little ruching at the front of the neckline. And when I originally made this um, Agnes top, I decided to have a go of the ruching on the neckline. On the neckline, It's the only version I ever made with that ruching detail. And that's probably because I was never too keen on it once I'd done it. Um, I used the length of elastic the pattern suggests for my size and everything, but I just never felt it sat right. With the neckline being scooped, it felt like it sort of, I felt like I was tugging it down to get it to sit across my bust. And then it would sort of ping up a little bit, but it didn't quite sit right above. Um, so it's just always one of those things that slightly bothered me about the top. Um, and I sort of assumed that I wouldn't be able to take it off. It would sort of spoil the fabric. But when I was having a look in my box and I pulled it, I thought I should just try and pick in the, the little piece of elastic and actually seeing how it ends up like. I might be able to actually just take it off. And if the fabric's fine, I could just enjoy it as a simple 
top, but like a classic Agnes top, more like I enjoy wearing. So that's what I did. I unpicked, unpicked it quite carefully. You could then still see a bit of the stitching there. Um, you know, um, it was sort of a bit indented and everything. So I thought I'll pop it in the wash with the next wash load and just see if that kind of flattens out and becomes less noticeable. And actually it did. I'll hold it up now so you, you can't really see um, the elastic stitching at all. I mean, you can maybe face it very, very slightly, but I don't, I think that there's other bits in the fabric that look a bit like that anyway. So I don't think it's really very noticeable at all now. Um, I think I'd happily wear this um, and not think it looks like something has been there and been taken off and there's something left over. So yeah, it was really quick. It took me all of five minutes. Um, and actually I'm really pleased to have done that because I think it's a really cute top. I really like the rainbow print. I, I really enjoyed making the rainbow print go the other way around the neckline. I think it looks quite cute, like a little, I don't know what it's like, a little stick of stripy rock or something. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to have done that. I'm going to try wearing this top now more and see if it feels more comfortable on now to have that piece of elastic that sort of was bothering me a little bit. So yeah, I thought I'd share that. It obviously doesn't help me clear up my wardrobe at all, but hopefully if it makes the top more wearable, um, and that's all good too. So yeah, that was a slight alteration that I wanted to share too. And then the next thing that I wanted to share with you is an update on my latest knitting project. Um, although I didn't get my sewing machine out at all in the Easter holidays, I did do a bit of knitting um, in the evenings, which was really nice and helped keep my sort of crafting cup full. Um, and I've been really enjoying working on my latest project and I've made some good progress actually over the last couple of weeks. And I'm currently working on knitting up this sweater here. It is the Cyrus sweater by Wool and the Gang. Um, I got this um, pattern and yarn as a kit um, at Christmas as a present. Um, and so I've been looking forward to getting out and starting on it. And you knit it up in cotton yarn and it's this sort of dropped shoulder sweater with this really pretty sort of lacy diamond stitch on it, which I really like the look of. And it's been a lot of fun to knit. I've really enjoyed the um, pattern. So I'll show you where I'm, where I'm up to and how I'm getting on. This is my Cyrus sweater in progress and I'm making it in this lovely hot pink yarn, which is the colour I really love. You can see the lovely stitch there. Um, yeah, it's been fun to knit. It's got a bit of ribbing at the bottom. And at the moment, I've kind of got the front and back pieces here and I'm currently picking up stitches around the neckline so I can make the neckband. And it's a bit of an interesting one, actually. It's slightly different to neckbands that I've done before in that I actually am having to make extra stitches because usually I find often you kind of want to almost pick up fewer stitches than you have around the neck just to sort of bring it in so the neckband sits nice and flat, a bit like you'd when you're sewing, you cut a shorter neckband um, than the actual size of the hole. Um, but with this one, it actually wants you to make a few extra stitches. And I think that's because the neckband of this one's a bit different to what I've knitted before. It's a bit wider. And what you do is you make it wider and then you fold it over and then stitch it underneath. So you have like a two layer, more, more sort of substantial neckband rather than a one layer one that sits quite flat and a bit, a bit sort of um, lighter weight, I guess. So... Yeah, I'm just going with it at the moment, um, picking up the number of stitches the pattern wants, which has involved a little bit of maths and making sure I kind of add those stitches in, extra stitches in nice and evenly across the whole neckband. I'm just going to go with it and see how it turns out and see how the neckband sits. I'm kind of interested to see what it'll be like once I've kind of rib knitted the whole neckband and folded it over. So yeah, I'm just giving it, giving it a try and I'm hoping it'll come together nicely. Um, whenever I've made Wood and the Gang patterns before, I do find their instructions are really good and they always come together really nicely and I haven't had to sort of adapt them. I find they do, they work really well. Um, so I'm hoping this one will work really well too. I'm just a bit intrigued because it's a bit different to how I've sort of done a neckband before. I think also with this pattern, the way you do the sleeves is slightly different. I think you might sort of, sort of pick up a knit from the shoulder and then knit down the sleeve, whereas I'm used to kind of knitting the sleeves separately and then sewing them on. So We'll see how that goes too. It's always nice to try something different in knitting, I think. Um, and I think what's often nice is to try something different, but with a pattern company you're comfortable with. Um, so then it feels like there's still some element of familiarity there, I guess. So yes, I'm really enjoying it. I just need to finish um, picking up around the back of this neckline then I can get started on the rib stitch and then yeah, see how that neckband starts to take shape. But yeah, I love the colour. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to just carrying on working on, on this one. Having made a few other bits and bobs recently um, for other people, mainly my children, it's nice to be knitting something for me now. So yeah, I'll update you further as I make more progress on, on this one. So yeah, that is my Cyrus sweater kit by Wool and the Gang. Um, yeah, but I'm looking forward to, I'll be doing some more this evening, hopefully. <laughs> so I think that's everything that I've got to share in this week's video. And it's been really, really nice to be back 
on um, after a couple of weeks break. I have missed coming on here so it's really nice to be back and sharing what I'm up to and talking all things sewing and a bit of knitting too. And now my children are back at school, um, hopefully I'll be back on weekly with lots more sewing chat. I've got some sewing plans that I want to gather together and share with you as well so that'll be coming in a video soon too. So yes, I hope you're all well. Thank you very much for joining me again after the break. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you again very soon. So thank you and bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. <laughs> bye.